The Coalition for a Safe and Healthy Connecticut is calling for thorough chemical policy reform this year, making Connecticut one of 20 states nationwide pushing legislative proposals to address chemical toxic reform. Here to tell us what they need from lawmakers and why is Ann Hulick, coordinator with CSHC, and Dr. Mark Mitchell. He's the president of the Connecticut Coalition for Environmental Justice. Thanks, both of you, for being here. You. you know, if, if we could start out, you know, in doing research for this um, segment, I, I read several times that Connecticut is widely considered kind of a leading the way on a lot of um, chemical uh, toxic reform. And if you could give me an example of, of what we've done correctly or right. Well, there have been a lot of things that, that Connecticut has done. Uh, traditionally, we've been a leader in the areas of um, mercury, um, getting mercury, uh, added mercury out of products such as uh, um, such as thermostats and, right. and, and thermometers. Um, we've done a lot of stuff um, uh, uh, in um, a lot of toxics, and obviously last year we had um, BPA. The year before last, you know, we we still have one of the strongest um, bisphenol A laws in the world. Um, but there's um, a new study that's uh, urging you to push for more. Absolutely, um, we are. Uh, concern because they're finding that BPA is in half of all of the receipts, uh, thermal receipts. Um, uh, so that, you know, if you go to a store, you get one of these receipts where the heat um, actually um, puts in the, the letters and numbers. Those thermal receipts, about half of them contain bisphenol A. And it's a powder, um, so it's more readily available, and it can actually be absorbed through the skin. So, so one question is, how do you know if, uh, how do you differentiate whether you're the receipt is is that kind right is the bpa receipt <laughs> yeah. well that's a good question um, right now we don't know the company that produces the alternative to bpa has said that they're going to start putting red threads um, in their paper so that you can tell the difference but the, the but the problem is that the alternative to bpa um, bisphenol a is bisphenol s and we don't know anything about bisphenol oh. S. We know that the BPA is very, very toxic. Um, so we don't know whether bisphenol S is, is much safer or worse. And so that's where we're, we, we think that, you know, this is, this is only the start. We really need comprehensive chemical policy reform. Many of the uh, state legislators that I talked to were completely on board uh, for the first law or the previous law uh, to get it out of the infant formula and baby food containers. Mm -hmm. uh, and they were very happy to vote for that. And in fact, Senator Ed Meyer, who heads the Environment Committee, is somebody that I have worked for, I have great respect for. Mm -hmm. But some of the legislators are worried about the creep. In other words, after the receipts at a fast food place, what's next? And, mm -hmm. and how bad can it possibly be if we've been having these receipts forever? I mean, do, is there data on people getting sick? And one legislator said to me, well, unless people are eating them, then, then what's the problem here? I mean, what, where does it stop, or does it, or should it? Well, that's a very good qu question. The fact of the matter is there are over 82,000 chemicals now in commerce that most of which have not been tested for safety at all. And um, that is in large part because of the fact that our federal law, the Toxic Substance Control Act, really does not effectively require um, EPA to regulate and test these chemicals that are, are in our products. So we really don't have good data about all of the chemicals and their safety. Um, what we've learned over the years is that through more and more rigorous scientific research that many of these chemicals that are in consumer products like bisphenol A now on thermal paper receipts are linked in very rigorous peer-reviewed studies to things like breast cancer, testicular cancer, uh, insulin resistance, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, um, and many others. So yeah, even obesity. They're, they're even talking. obesity. But so how much we, exposure would you need? Well, that's a good question. Um, more and more re recent research has shown that very small amounts of exposure um, to these chemicals can lead to harm. Wow. In fact, where we used to think that the amount of exposure was the poison, we now know that the timing of the exposure is um, often more uh, predictive of harm. In fact, uh, studies now on umbilical cord blood show that our babies are born with these chemicals already in their systems. And laboratory studies uh, done show that prenatal exposure to many of these chemicals is strongly associated with disease. So an at-risk person, say someone who's pregnant, maybe mm -hmm. have a lower immune system that is sick or what have you, it would only take a 
a very small amount. Well, it seems right. that you're on something because we were the first state to pass the prior law, yes. and now there are 30 states pending chemical reform laws. So I guess to Lori's point, we are leading the way. Yes, yes, and, and many other countries are now um, have been following suit. Um, Canada, other countries have been following suit um, about that. But you know, most people don't know that it's perfectly legal to add toxic substances into um, products, even if we have safer alternatives. And so we think that that law needs to change. Um, we need to be able to say if something is is toxic and there are safe alternatives, that we should not be putting the toxic substances on the shelf um, or um, giving it to people so that they have it in their receipts. And also. I had a, a dollar bill that was tested uh, and found that they had BPA um, in the dollar bill, probably from the receipts that I also carry in my pocket. But, but um, in speaking about that, I mean, it's one thing to offer the alternative, and it's another thing to mandate it. And in knowing and dealing with legislators and their constituents and the business world, um, you know, for, for business owners to think, okay, well, so now I have to use this other kind of paper or ink or whatever, um, is that going to require me, you know, to outlay cash? Or do I have to get new equipment? Do I have to get a new distributor of the paper? And that, um, I can imagine, would create some some pushback. Right. right. One of the things that we're trying to do with this law is work with the um, EPA group that is looking at safer alternatives to address exactly the point that Dr. Mitchell made so that we're not just um, using another chemical that's not safety tested. And we will hope that we will require a shift to safer alternatives when they are available and hopefully there will be no cost disadvantage to our, our Connecticut businesses. Yeah, but, but it, I mean, it, I think it's really important for our state legislature to, to protect our citizens. If the federal government isn't doing that, then it's going to be up to the states uh, to, to take the lead in doing that. Um, you know, businesses say that they want certainty, um, but they're fighting at the federal level to keep um, a, a, a system of uh, going into effect where they could, in fact, say, you know, give three years to phase out certain things and, and, and make the plans for uh, orderly changes to safer alternatives. And in the long run, have you gotten a sense from uh, commerce groups and business groups as to whether they would back you in, in this? And beyond Senator Meyer, do you have a sense of how your agenda is going to do in this session? Well, we have. Senator Myers truly been a champion. There have been many other legislators that have been champions um, on these bills and um, have um, indicated support for Connecticut continuing to move towards more comprehensive reform. So we are very fortunate about that. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing too many children um, that are having so many health problems uh, from the diabetes to the um, obesity um, to even... Um, Tristan 21 that's the Down syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are the kinds of things that have been associated uh, with uh, this chemical, um, bisphenol A, um, and we, we need to phase out these chemicals. Mm -hmm. So just, um, we only have about 20 seconds, but uh, do you take receipts when you <laughs> buy stuff? Uh, I try to refuse the receipts, yeah. but sometimes I, I need to, so I, yeah. I wash my hands very frequently. Interesting, interesting. All right, well, thanks very much for stopping by and telling us. It's very interesting, and, and we wish you good luck with your, Thank your you work. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you very much. Don't forget, if you missed something here on The Real Story, you can now watch it online by going to ctnow.com. You can also catch us on YouTube. Thanks for watching this week's edition of The Real Story. We'll see you here again next week.